when in the quaint mountain villages of Marjayu, Hasbaya, and others, it's often hard to believe that this beautiful region of Lebanon faced occupation, violence, and atrocities in the recent past. That is, until you see the border wall, the former detention camp, and the United Nations peacekeeping forces patrolling the area. Southern Lebanon was Israeli occupied until the year 2000, meaning that memories of occupation are still fresh. But today, while the area is safe to visit, it's probably best to keep up to date with the news, in case of an increase in tension. But I'm here, not to discuss politics, but to talk about how to visit southern Lebanon, and some of the best places to go when you're there. And when I say southern Lebanon, I don't mean the southern coastal cities of Sur and Saida. I mean the border areas south of the Litani River, the little visited areas that foreigners require a permit to visit. Places like Naura, Tibnin Castle, Marun Ras, Fatima Gate, El Khayyam Detention Camp, Hasbaya, Beaufort Castle, and the Roman ruins at Habariya. However, if you're not Lebanese, then visiting most of these places requires a permit, with the exception of Beaufort Castle. Getting this permit can be a little tricky. You'll have to go to the Mohammed Zghaib military barracks inside a city, with a photocopy of your passport page and Lebanese entry stamp on one single sheet of A4. Bring an Arabic speaker with you for better chances. These are the coordinates of this place, so pop that into Google Maps and hope for the best. Be aware that it may be closed on Sundays. Getting the permit shouldn't take you longer than 20 minutes. One of the most interesting places to visit is the Fatima Gate, a border crossing which has been closed since the Israeli withdrawal from Lebanon in the year 2000. The pro-Palestinian murals on the wall were fascinating to see. However, some of the writing was simply graffiti tags. There were also pictures of people who had died fighting against Israel. The surrounding area also had a lot of Palestinian relevance. For instance, this nearby roundabout had the Dome of the Rock in the middle of it, which is one of Jerusalem's most famous landmarks. I also noticed this road sign saying that Jerusalem, the capital of Palestine, is 160 kilometers away. Traveling to the south of Fatima Gate, you'll be able to drive on a road which overlooks the border. Here, you'll be able to see the United Nations interim forces, known as UNIFIL, patrolling the area. I'm told you may even see the Israeli military on the other side, although I did not notice this. Interestingly, the Lebanese side of the border is filled with villages, but the Israeli side seems only to have farmland close to the border wall. The scenery in the area is stunning, on both sides of the border. When I was travelling this road, we pulled up beside the Indonesian contingent of the UNIFIL peacekeepers and had a little chat with them. These guys seemed friendly, relaxed, and willing to take pictures with us. Not far away, near the town of Bintish Bed, is a village called Marun Eras. From here, you can see well over the border, and it's a fantastic place to admire the beautiful views. There is also a park here that has a viewing platform, which is perhaps provocatively called Iran Park. To the north of here is the town of Tibnin, which is home to a crusader castle, built in the year 1105. Seeing as there are no tourists here, you can just walk into the castle without paying an entry fee. There are beautiful views of Tibnin from the top of the castle. However, these views pale in comparison to those seen from Beaufort's castle. Beaufort's castle, known as Sha'if Castle in Arabic, is another crusader castle, which was built in the 12th century. This place has been converted into a museum, and you do have to pay to enter. However, being one of the most spectacular places I've been to in Lebanon, it is certainly worth it. If you're coming from Nabatia, then you will not need a permit to visit this castle. From 1976 until 1982, the Palestine Liberation Organization, or PLO, controlled this castle due to its strategic location. However, during the Israeli occupation of southern Lebanon, the Israel Defense Forces captured this castle. As a result, damage was inflicted. The most damage I saw there was in El Khayyam detention camp. This camp was originally built by the French, but it was used by the Israeli-backed South Lebanon army to detain prisoners during the Lebanese civil war. Amnesty International and other groups have reported serious human rights abuses coming from this camp. After the Israeli withdrawal from Lebanon, this place is said to have become a Hezbollah run museum. But during the 2006 war, the old detention camp was bombed by the Israelis, and the rubble remains there today. The nearby Druze town of Hasbaya is also certainly worth a visit. The town is situated at the foot of Mount Hermon, the summit of which straddles the border between Lebanon and Syria. It is the tallest mountain in Syria, at 2,814 meters. Thus, the views from this town and the surrounding area are beautiful. 
The town is home to a large citadel, which is currently owned by the prominent Shahabi family. Although you're allowed to walk into the courtyard, don't enter the building unless you're invited to do so, as it is private property. Close to Hasbaya are the Roman ruins of Habariya, which are also worth visiting. Another interesting site in southern Lebanon is Qana, a village nearby the city of Sur. Many people believe this place to be the location that Jesus turned water into wine. It's on the road from Sur to Tibnin, and you do not need a permit to visit him. Well, that's all for my southern Lebanon guide. Naura is also meant to be a delight to visit, with beautiful beaches and good restaurants. However, I didn't have time to visit this place, so I can't comment on it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for more videos exploring little visited areas like southern Lebanon.